tag to something else. Right. But here we go. The Lucina comes out. Kind of a character where she has decent speed, she has decent air speed and stuff like that to navigate around mm -hmm. Nitro's projectiles. But if you can keep them out, then Lucina doesn't have too much to contest it once it, they're in that mid-range. So it's a matter of Nitro keeping out the Lucina and having her stay there. Yeah. I, I do want to quote the funny thing about um, Ricker, in my opinion, is he feels like a slower Marth, but with his range being longer. And that's why you kind of see him go for that up B out of shield there. He does have a little bit of a DP option where he's able to get his opponents off and just put him for up B out of shield. Yeah. Your objective in this matchup is if Lucina is nowhere near you, you're winning. Yeah. And that's what we see from Nitro here. He already knows, like, hey, if he's not going to come at me, if he's that far away, if I have him in disadvantage just like that, I am objectively winning. And it's that situation where you see him toss all the projectiles, and it does force P Kigoman to actually pick an option. And if he neutral get upset at the wrong time, he will get caught from it. The key here to surviving against Richter and the Belmonts is your timing when you come back on the stage. Because once they throw the axe, they're committing to the end line that has. Did you see what Nitro did there? He delayed Hal when he was going to double jump, and... Mm -hmm. Kiko Man was so greedy to try and take out the stock before things got too hairy. He SD'd at zero, basically. Yeah. So that was great play from Nitro. Just one little mix-up, and that actually kind of cost Kiko Man potentially this game. Well, I like the use of that neutral air. The thing about neutral air is if you're actually able to read the DI, you can get a diagonal back air or a forward air, depending where they go. There's that force match. Kiko Man forcing out the edge guard. He tries to go low there, but immediately Nitro uses the diagonal forward air. The thing about it, if you use it diagonally, it has longer reach than when you would, would and you go forward or up. Yeah, and just the precision too. I mean, using those diagonals when you want them is sometimes a little bit unreliable on the controller, especially. So just being able to get what he wants at the right time, that's control of the character nice. at good its finest. Good diagonal forward there, sends up the ax here and he waits for him. I like the patience that he sees. He's committed to the ax. Great use of the platform to the back air and gets the perfect spot for it. Yeah. Three stock. It's always difficult when you're fighting Richter knowing where to land because you can see him moving and you saw Nitro, he, Nitro, he was going underneath and then he jumped away and got the range for the back air. If he went underneath and went right underneath him, he could have gone to up air alternatively. But either way, it caused Kikoman to get a little bit scared and Nitro still had enough time to And I feel like Kikoman's kind of shaking because this isn't what we're used to seeing from the gameplay from him. He's actually one of those like pretty strong players that has yet to have had a season, as I want to say, right? I mean, well, how can I say we're just barely approaching the end of the first season here, but it's he needs a season, right? Some of these players do just need a season to definitely perform themselves, and I feel like there are players who have yet to have found one, and season one is pretty much ending here. Hopefully, Kiko can go ahead and bring it back against Nitro. See how it goes. So again, just keeping up that range. Kiko Man is a little bit hesitant. I mean, how, how can you not be when fighting a character like Richter? But Whoa. bad directional air dodge is going to cost him the early stock. And I felt like he would have gone for an up air to see how high he was. He actually could have survived. It actually has a, little, a lot longer reach than with the up beat. Mm -hmm. Nice. There's the down air. Kiko Man kind of getting a great tech here. At this point, Kiko Man's objective ultimately is to try to... It sounds weird, but approach with shield and wait for Nitro's commitment with the axe and the side beat because you do have some time after the end lag to go ahead and get in get those forward airs and especially reading the jumps that's also your objective here if he jumps out of shield you can catch him with a forward air and put him in a bad position yeah but this is the difficult part as any character against Richter at the ledge trying to make it back with all of these items to ledge trap you and force you to usually get hit by that forward tilt if nothing else is able to hit you at that ledge we'll have to see Going for that down throw, not going to follow up with anything else though. Nitro still <laughs> looking for something and I like what Kikoman's doing. He's switching up, he's trying to apply the pressure and make him hesitant to try and throw out and trying to create that space. But when you do that, you try to do defensive options like those rolls instead and that leaves you open to Lucina who has such a wide range and enough time to react to uh, reactions like that. Yeah. Immediately Nitro using up that down to four, keeping Kigoman away from the stage. I like the fact that he's always good to use the diagonals, especially when he toss out the cross. It also means it hasn't come back back here. So you got to be careful when you land on the stage because sometimes the cross will get you. Yeah, and the back hit of the cross actually has a pretty reliable setup into a lot of up Rick, air. Richter's uh, yeah. aerials. You just have to be aware that it's going to happen and then not and the pressing button when it's coming back. You saw he was waiting for it, but Kigoman was one step ahead just to let the cross go through his shield. Down tilt's a pretty good move. Again, I also frame, um, you can actually two frame at the ledge, and of course you have to initiate both hits of down tilt, which you have to double tap twice in order to go for it. Yeah. Come in, getting back on the stage, landing with a down air, but immediately Nitro with still the great distance to have against Kikoman. The one thing that I don't see Nitro go for a lot is the up tilt. It's pretty good. Oh, and there's the upbeat, and Lucina is out of here. Yep. Kind of 
the factor of DIing in also. You can't DI out of that uh, down air and then that'll leave you open to like a forward air instead, but you wouldn't have died to the DP. But just bringing you back with a fair, Kegelman, like I said, doing a lot better in this game, especially with the early stock that he got against Nitro, and he's getting more consistent with these edge guards. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, what Your objective here is once you get in, once you understand the pattern, it's kind of like fighting a Mega Man boss. Your opponent's putting up a pattern between going for the forward air, the back air, the cross, the axe. You're able to just go ahead and get in, wait for the wait for the defensive play here, and immediately swipe and hopefully get him off the stage. Yeah. Well, Nitro just tossing out all these projectiles here, trying to get something against Kiko Man Kingdom, just trying to hold on through. There's that forward air, pushing him towards the ledge. Can he find the opportunity to come in using that double jump to get around the axe? Yeah, and we're seeing Kiko Man, he's being a little bit air happy, and I feel like he's using the projectiles to elicit the direct no air dodges, and doing a good job of keeping him juggled in the air despite Kiko Man being the one that he wants to stay in the air because of Lucina's strong aerials. We'll have to see the dare barely miss faces. Forward air, Dangerous okay. position. Nice, great, good directional forward yet again. There's the axe. I like how he sets up the neutral there because if it would have rolled from the, from, the, um, from the ledge, he definitely would have caught that. Holy water. Oh, there and it, it catches him. That's going to be Nigel taking a 2-0, but a great choice for Kiko Man. Yeah, he was definitely able to catch up Super last second, game one was kind of just like fumbling the ball. I'm not going to lie. he It's not that he got sauced. It's more of like he was figuring out the first encounter, and then he just kind of SD'd, and then he lost.